Hi folks, welcome to Chris Goes Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back. We're going to show some clips here that I found on the GOP YouTube channel that are pre-scathing and gives you a pretty good idea of what's really going on. And this is all of the mainstream media. There's MSNBC on here. I believe there's CBS, ABC, CNN, Fox. And we're going to look at a few clips and I'm going to make a few comments and I want you to tell me what you think. And the name of this video, the whole episode is going to be, who would you pick now? Who would you vote for today? Given another choice. So let's listen a little bit and let's uh, listen to these talking heads and I'm being kind, more like bobbleheads. And all of a sudden now they got a spine. All of a sudden now they want to tell the truth. It's amazing. Let's listen. It's just incredible to me how they do this. It really they is. They feel that the, the rug was pulled out from under them. You hear criticism from the Brits, from Germany, from France, and that is is really hurting American position overseas. And these cables, the, the dissent memo and these cables now from the Afghan employees at the State Department we got in the last 24 hours are devastating. We, we have destroyed morale. The best way, the most effective way, the, the way I'm focused on to get folks in, again, is to be in direct contact with them uh, and to help guide them in, to give them instructions on where to go, uh, when to go there, uh, and uh, then we can, uh, we can bring them into the airport safely and effectively. So they're uh, still uh, effectively on their own getting to the airport? Uh, again, uh, we found that the, the best way to do this is to be in direct touch with them. Um, President, Secretary of Defense have been clear that uh, we will uh, do whatever it takes to get Americans uh, home and, uh, and out of harm's way. What? Now, here's the thing. Let's stop for a minute. The morale, the morale of the American troops, the morale of the American people, they didn't give a good damn. And there she is again. They didn't give a good damn about the morale of this country and what other world leaders thought. When they were calling Donald Trump, who was the president of the United States, put the man aside for a minute. It's the office. Nobody talked like this in the heat of Watergate, for Pete's sake. I was around. I was in high school. I remember. I recall. Just got out of high school when that all came down. They, morale, you don't think for a minute? They're putting down at every given opportunity. Call him all kinds of names. He got peed on by prostitutes. He takes too much scoops of ice cream. He, he walked too slowly on a ramp because he's a pussy. I mean, this went on and on and on. And not talking about the Russia Gate, Russia Gate and collusion, collusion and two impeachments. And he caused an insurrection January 6th. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice has filed, has charged no one with insurrection. No one out of the hundreds arrested. And most of those shouldn't have been arrested at all. So you got a trespass ticket and paid a fine. They didn't give a good damn about American morale then. All of a sudden, now they care. Ask yourself why. Let's listen some more. We're seeing right now, it seems to be, I mean, it's been catastrophic, I would say, for the last week. And it's striking to me that when you talk to Jake Sullivan, when you listen to President Biden, they are, in effect, saying, yeah, this, is, this went the way that we thought it would go. Which this is I why find we should have gotten out. Extraordinary, and this is I, it, extraordinary it, it, thing. And, and look, yeah. President Biden, in his remarks on, on Friday, said three things that were demonstrably, provably untrue. Al-Qaeda is gone yeah. from Afghanistan. That's not true. We haven't been criticized by our allies. That's not true. Americans can make it to the airport without being harassed. That's not true. I mean, he seems to have lost touch with reality. And, and with that's a huge problem. Every day. Now, he's lost touch with reality. 
they're actually mad. And I'm going to give you why I think they're so mad as we get farther into this episode. But think, why are they so mad? Why are they so pissed off? Because they're good, loyal Americans, and they hate to see good people, American people, and people that helped us in Afghanistan be beaten and, and killed and, and, and sometimes worse. There is worse than death, by the way. That's not what they're mad about. They could give two dams. They could give a crap about the Afghan people, and they could give a crap about the American servicemen. There might be some isolated news reporters that do honor the American military. Very small percent. Let's tell the truth here. Now, let's, uh, let's, let's go on. And, and Now, this is Fox now. Now, I'm not a big Chris Wallace fan. I was a little bit bigger fan of his father. Those of you that are old enough to remember Mike Wallace from CBS, even though they were biased back then, at least they most of the time they held it to themselves and did the best they could to report the news. Those days are over. Ever since Watergate, the floodgates have been opening, and then the Internet just escalated the fiasco. But I digress again. Let's listen to this. The likely successor to German Chancellor Merkel said, this is the biggest debacle that NATO has seen since its foundation. And here is the chairman of the British Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. To see their commander-in-chief call into question the courage of men I fought with, to claim that they ran, it's shameful. Those who have never fought for the colors they fly should be careful about criticizing those who have. Mr. Secretary, does the president not know what's going on? Does the president not know what's going on? Chris Wallace was a total ass and really, really leaned heavily in Biden's favor during debates. I don't mind honest criticism, and there's some things that Trump did I didn't like, even though I'm still a huge Trump supporter, was back then, even more now. And sometimes I wish he would tone down the rhetoric. There's no question. No question. But I asked somebody once, you know, it's funny. The Gettysburg Address given by Lincoln in memorial to the Americans that died in Gettysburg in July, early July of 1863 was one of the most quoted and the most famous speeches ever given, ever and when Lincoln got done, he said, you know, that was a terrible speech. And the delivery was bad. The delivery was bad. All of it was bad. It was too short. People weren't paying attention. And no one will remember. But here we are. Here we are, hundreds of years later. It's one of the most famous speeches given by an American president. It's the words that meant something. It was exactly the right thing to say at exactly the right place at exactly the right time. Same with Trump. Take away his personality quirks just like Lincoln's bad delivery of a speech. It's the substance that matters. It's the substance that matters. But I digress again. Chris Wallace is right. Who, really, what he's asking is, who the hell is the president? No one knows. They're faceless, unelected bureaucrats. Starting this week on Capitol Hill, about what exactly was going on at the State Department, for example. So right now, things are caught in a huge bureaucracy. But you have to question, is the president insulated, isolated? On Friday, it was just almost bizarre. What he was saying just did not match the reality of what some of his other advisors were saying. What I was really struck by was the question, and you were in the room, Caitlin, when he was asked about allies, essentially uh, suggesting that allies are not um, you know, upset at the U.S. or embittered by this, and it's just not the case. So I really, I think this will be a very defining moment in the Biden presidency about what we learn is of him as president, but it seems to me he's a bit insulated or isolated inside the White House. And you, as soon as he said that, actually, the British Defense Secretary right. came bizarre. out and he said it was a mistake. Right. He said that this is going to um, encourage al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations to really take advantage of the situation in Afghanistan. You've got tens of thousands of people out there desperate to get to the airport, surrounded by the Taliban, 
So why can't the U.S. send convoys out there? If you have uh, an American passport and if you have the right credentials, the Taliban has been allowing people to, uh, to, to pass safely through. No, no. Now, I want you to remember something. This piece of crap. She's the one that actually cried the night Donald Trump won in November 2016. That how, how is the military going to face this, this monster? And it's a disgrace to all the men and women in armed forces. And, oh, my God, my God, what will the NATO countries think? And, and she was just in tears. You jerk. You jerk. How do you think the U.S. military feels now? You were played a large part in getting Joe Biden elected. NATO is freaking out. What did that one uh, British spokesperson say? It was the worst disaster since the founding of NATO? Are you kidding me? And where's the tears for these people? Where's the tears for the American military? Where's the tears for the Afghans that are being slaughtered? She sees the picture. She probably sees a lot more than goes on the air. Where's the tears now? Effing hypocrite. Hypocrite. You should be fired. Cases. Uh, there, there's no such thing as an absolute in this kind of environment, as you would imagine, uh, Martha. There, there, there have been incidents of uh, people uh, you know, having some, some tough encounters with, with Taliban. As we learn about those uh, incidents, we certainly go back and engage the Taliban leadership and, and, uh, and press home to them that our expectation is that they allow uh, you know, our people with the, with the appropriate con uh, credentials to get through the, through the checkpoints. Do you know how many Americans and legal permanent residents are currently in Afghanistan? Here's another one, another talking head. You know, I can understand why they want attractive people to be on news. It's not radio. What the one guy say once, I got the face that's perfect for radio, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. I understand you need pretty girls, handsome men. I get it, okay? But you got to be able to do your job too. Now, look, look at the moronic answers she gets and look at what her response is. And awaiting evacuation. Thanks for having me, Brianna. We cannot give you a precise number, but we believe that it is several thousand Americans who are, uh, we are working with now to try to get safely out of. No, that's the thing. Why didn't she ask? I cut off the clip because she didn't ask. What does several thousand mean in English? Two, three, four, eight, 10, 15, 20, 25,000, maybe another 50,000 Afghans. No, no follow-up question. No follow-up question at all. So you know what? If you're going to be hired because you're attractive, I have no issue with that at all. But Jesus, do your job. Be good at what you do. Because there's 50 other people right behind you that can take your spot. But then again, CNN isn't interested in doing their jobs and doing the news. They're a propaganda piece. And as you watch this video, I want you to think about, in the end, what I'm going to say, I think, is the reason why they're so mad. Think about why, all of a sudden now, the media is turning on Biden. Think about that. This is an emergency now. It's nothing to do with process. They're just trying to save lives. Tens of thousands are trying to get through. At the front, they're being crushed. Paratroopers pulling people from the mayhem. Medics rushing from the next casualty to the next and the next. Dehydrated and terrified. The soldiers spray the crowd with a hose, anything to cool them down. Men, women, and lots and lots of children. Please call someone. And then what we feared, the inevitable. I want to stop this to make a point, and then we'll watch the rest of this. Why did, this is Sky News from Australia. Why in the world do we have to get foreign 
media, foreign media, to get the video and the news about what's really going on. Why? Foreign media. And Australia right now is really destroying the, the civil rights of their citizens with their, with their uh, draconian lockdowns. Now they're using the military and guns to keep people locked up. But even still, their media tells more of the truth than ours. How sick is that? Is this a stabilized withdrawal from Afghanistan? It looks like death to me. In the mayhem, units rush through the crowds to shore up weak points in the evacuation center. Everyone working flat out, trying to stem the tide of an unfolding disaster. The problem now is not trying to control the crowds per se, it's the fact that at the front people are just getting crushed. There are thousands of people surrounding the airport. The Camp Sullivan, Camp Baron, the military entrance, all of them have been closed. So they're beating the people, smoking fire gas at them. There's no way that people get in. So this is a complete failure. What the prisoner has been saying, it contradicts the situation. My journalist is telling me from the airport. One of my journalists met inside the airport. and the other Again, here we are. Ahmad Shah Mohibi. He runs a news agency. I'm not sure which one. He happens to be on MSNBC. It was his journalists that got this film. Not Americans. His journalists with his news organization. And obviously, his English is excellent. So he's very familiar with American, American culture, and how things work in America. I'm not sure he's a citizen, but it doesn't matter. He's head of this news agency, and his people got this. Not American journalists. That one has been beaten and still outside. So the reality on the ground is that the administration has literally failed. This footage video you see, it is from my journalist wanted to make his way out. The U.S. Embassy has issued them these passes, or they call it visa passes. The problem is not the Taliban. The problem is our capabilities, U.S. forces and the, and the Afghan security forces, they cannot control the crowd. We're talking about thousands of people. 18,000 left, 6,000 speak. Another thing I want to mention. The way this was done, of course, we were going to pull out no matter what. And that just burned Biden's ass and all the neocons and neo-dems and the uniparty in Washington that all they love is war, 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 because it makes billions for the corporations that feed their political campaigns. And so it goes. All right. Eisenhower called it a military industrial complex. Okay. But they knew they were going to pull out anyway. This could have been done better. And I'm going to give a small shot to President Trump. He should have got some kind of organization together. All the Afghans, just the ones that helped the Americans, translators, government officials, Afghan army members, things like that. All the Americans, they all have cell phones. Let's tell the truth here. They all could have been on a network and they all could have been getting emails, mass emails out. Two, three weeks before, as the Taliban were advancing. And don't tell me that their intelligence agencies didn't know. Of course they knew and they did nothing. They could have emailed all these people. Now, of course, they would have caused a small panic in the country because word would have got out. But it would have been way better than this. And Trump could have started that, but he didn't. But Biden definitely didn't. He knew what was coming. He knew and did nothing. He caused, and I say he, Biden, because he's the president. It's really whoever really is president that's the cause of this. But we don't know who that is. So we'll, cause, we'll say it's Biden for now. Last night, right now, everything is closed. So why do we see all these footages? You're being beaten. And here's another thing. Over 90% of these people have never worked for the U.S. government. The, their family is not in the U.S. So it has been a mismanagement of this program. You know, this had been done a long time ago. We literally failed. It has been a terrible leadership. And I think still the president, he admitted his failure, and he's still not regretting what is happening on the ground. You know, yes, there are a lot of brave American souls on the ground, but if the leadership is not working, if the strategy is not working, how are you going to safe, safely bring this? What leadership? What strategy? This guy's trying to be kind. He really is. 
Because what is he going to do? Tell you guys suck. He'll never let him on TV again. He'll let him never be uh, do commentary again or report again. And obviously, he has a news agency. He says my reporters, my reporters. So obviously, they work for him and the agency that he works for or runs. What strategy? What leadership? People at home, you know, on the crowd, my journalist told me there are a lot of American citizens with green cards, even with a U.S. citizenship uh, passport and, and the NGOs. That is the issue. So the, the crowd, there's, there's really, really, really hard for people to go and say, oh, you're an American. Let's go on a plane. So this situation, it's a chaos. It's a disaster. I got a message from the journalist that she made it to the airport. She was crying and she was telling me, Ahmad, I don't know what to tell you. People are killing each other over a bottle of water. It's such a, such a disaster and chaos.